thoughts? Like I heard that you yeah. were, your parents wanted you to be an engineer, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, they were trying to get you away from art. They were trying to get me away from art. Well, you know, it's the classic, the classic story, right? Um, first generation immigrant kid uh, from immigrants and your parents are like, okay, we want you to be, you know, economically sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried it and, you know, it didn't, didn't appeal to me. So I went into art. Yeah. But do you, is there any like benefit from that? Um, like engineering foundation that you have into your art? Like, does that help your art at all? Yeah, I, I think um, mostly is like the process of organizing, mm -hmm. you know, um, the process of like just processing information and just the way you're able to like um, process the information and analyze it and, and, and give it back mm -hmm. in a way that's structured. Mm -hmm. in a certain way that anybody can understand it that's basically you know what it is right yeah you have a, a mathematical mind plus an artistic mind which seems like a pretty yeah. Rough yeah thing i can't math has always eluded me i'm terrible at it. oh really no yeah. I, I yeah i was good at math i was good in physics mm -hmm. uh, and i was well I, i'm one of those weird people mm -hmm. you know i use both hands Oh, really? I never sleep. <laughs> I yeah. Never sleep. I'm one of those people. Yeah. I So I became a father a couple of years ago and I, um, I relate so much to the, the, um, the origin story of Pelham, which was that like you were, were just not sleeping at all. Exactly. And just like kind of losing your mind and then just creating art, like just drawing and yeah. the drawing was getting crazier and <laughs> being exactly. sleep deprived. It's still, I'm still yeah. in that zone. Like we still are figuring out our, our sleep, you know, cause our son, he's, oh, yeah. he's about to turn two. So, and he still hasn't settled. Like we, he doesn't sleep throughout the night yet. So it's still a little. Yeah. 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 Our, our oldest William mm -hmm. that was like that. And we tried um, to get him to sleep alone and it was even worse. Yeah. And you, you're like, you work at night, right? Like you stay up late and just, or drawing yeah that didn't change at all when you became a father you weren't like i need to adjust this so so what happened is um i used to work during the day mm -hmm. also so what that did is is it completely me it completely threw me off because even though i would like wake up between two and four mm -hmm. i would be able to sleep afterwards enough to go to to go to work and then sleep in the afternoon but with a kid he's up early in the morning and in the afternoon he's up so you never have that time to compensate yeah so that's what happened you know it completely threw my pattern of sleeping off yeah how yeah. important is like uh artistic momentum to you like in order like were you just because you can't stop, right? Like once you get momentum going on a project, uh, are you able to like stop and do other things and then get back to it? Or are you like pretty like, I need to stay in the zone and, and work on this? So one of, one of the reasons why I wanted to do a master's in visual arts mm -hmm. is to be able to, again, intellectualize the process mm -hmm. of creating. Mm -hmm. Because although I do have an analytical mind, um, the create the creation process is completely left brain. Mm. Like it's like this beast that just takes over and you just have to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so to me, what the masters does is um, put that you're more able to intellectualize it, you're more able to like organize it in such a way that, if you jump off at a point, you're able to like jump back in, you know. Mm -hmm. That being said, you know, I still wake up at two o'clock in the morning and just create, <laughs> you know. It's just that now I have like two means yeah. of approaching the problem. Well, when you were younger and in, in college for something that was not artistic, you know, wasn't related to that, 
were you were you working at all were you drawing or doing it i mean did you stop for a while and, and focus on other I, I i did stop for a while um but i mean it i went into like another mode I, i'm an explorer yeah like i like to explore so when i was in college and so on and so forth like it was it was music i like you know, I, I, I kind of discovered like black metal in 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And I would stay up late and just listen to that stuff and just, you know, um, you know, think about philosophy and stuff like that with my friends. Mm -hmm. So it was a kind of another um, creative process. You know, it, it was more um, literature, mm -hmm. more than comics. And so I've always had um, that artistic inkling, but it's just, you know, it circled around different, you know, different points or d d different uh, ways of expression. Yeah. And you, was it after, I'm trying to figure out when the, what the timeline is for when you started Trip Comics. Like you was that like after you decided like I'm I'm gonna move more into art again and then and then you exactly but it wasn't so, to publish your own work right it was to publish other people's work yeah so what what happened is um, <clears throat> I I was working at a job <clears throat> you know I had like a month off paid huh? um, but then I got like this this operation it was a really bad operation. Um, and so, like, I wasn't even supposed to, like, walk anymore. <clears throat> and so I said, well, if, if it's going to be that way, then I'm just going to jump back to doing what I love, right? which mm -hmm. is comics. So I left my job and I, I, I went back to school, uh, learned comic and editing. Um, and I soon found out that at my university, um, visual arts, comics, and design were all separated and nobody talked to each other. And to me, it didn't make sense because what's a comic book, right? It's the, like, it's the perfect mix of design and, and visual arts. And I was like, no. So I started this magazine called Trip, hmm. uh, which later became the name of the company. And, and the thing was to get all these three departments to collaborate and make a magazine monthly. And so that's how it started because to me, it didn't make sense that all, all three of these things didn't communicate and didn't experiment. And, and then, uh, you eventually, cause you were working on your, your own books, uh, sleep deprived in the basement or something. And then you, yeah. and then, and then your, your partner said, Hey, let's publish this as a, Exactly. So, so what happened is, um, after university, I started working, um, uh, I was doing virtual environments because I, I also dabble in 3d and, um, and my first son, um, uh, arrived and that's when the sleeping problems arrived. Like, you know, I, I was a bouncer because I do Kung Fu. So I was a bouncer. Dude. <laughs> Uh, so I always worked at night, right? Uh -huh. And so afterwards, you know, I, I had like this regular day job. But when my kid arrived, it kind of threw everything off. Mm -hmm. And so at some point I would sleep like eight hours a week. I would see things fly by and I was like, did you see that? My partner was like, what? I was like, okay, <laughs> you know? And so uh, instead of getting frustrated in bed because the kid just wouldn't sleep, I just went down in the basement and started drawing. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're in that state, that semi-conscious state, you're not really aware of what you're drawing. Like, I don't know how many things I did and I ripped and, and threw in the garbage. And I wake up the next morning, I was like, oh, this is amazing, but you know, <laughs> why did why did I throw why did I throw this in the garbage? And I was like, you know, uh, and so one of my teachers, uh, 
with whom I became friends and started Drip Comics. Um, he was at the house at some point and he looked at these drawings. He was like, these are amazing. You should make like a, you know, a book. Mm-hmm. At this point, I was publishing other people. I never published my work. And I was like, no, it's not going to happen. And he was like, yeah, you should. And then it took me a couple of a couple of years to like finally put it together. Mm-hmm. Because the, wor- the way I work is I just draw random stuff. Mm-hmm. So there still needs to be like um, an editing process in order, in order not to make sense, but in order to have like uh, a narrative, right? Yeah. Uh, to it. But one of my projects would be to publish Helm uh, the way I drew it. So meaning without that, you know, that linear narrative. Um, yeah. But I do have like a heavy editing process in order to like, not necessarily make it make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more of a visual storyteller. Mm-hmm. Visually, some things make sense, even though um, narratively they don't. But visually, they make sense. <clears throat> and I always edit at night because that's when that mood, you're in that mood, you're in that trance. And so things make sense at a subconscious level, which consciously doesn't make sense. But I find um, working that way, you reach the public at a level. It's almost like it's almost like the myth, right? It's mm-hmm. almost like mythology. Um, you know their stories, you know their bullshit, but they still reach people at a mm-hmm. certain level unconscious level and that's why you know the myth to me the myth is still present today right we have these movies we have like you know still comic books uh, Mm -hmm. fantasy whatever yeah it's still you know it's still present today because our mind works that way you know through imagery through myths through symbolism and so to me working that way I'm able to talk to people on some level, which whatever, whatever, you know, um, whatever ideology they'll understand on, on, on that base level. Are you like subconsciously imposing a narrative on it as you're working? Like you, you don't, do you think that so, but what your editing process would be, would be to, add narrative to something like this though wouldn't it It would be but it it never works it doesn't so never works because um i you know for instance for the first part of helen Mm -hmm. i or the second part sorry the second part i i must have drawn that book twice over wow because i was trying to impose a narrative on it and it just wouldn't work it just wouldn't work Mm. And then I would like take this random image that had like, um, that did not connect to any of the panels before or after and put it there and it would make total sense. Yeah. Well, I found that the the scene um, in the second part where there's a conversation between the two men was the anchor of that whole section. I mean, that's, you you needed that in order to be like oh so this this is this is being held together with something there's there's something that's ha- actually happening here that i need to pay attention to yeah um and i i like that you know i i'm a narrative person like those are that's the stuff that i really appreciate but what i what draws me to your work is like the um the art i mean the 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 drawing and the um the looseness of it and and you know there's like an immediacy to your art that I that I respond to like on a visceral level and I think that most humans respond to on a visceral levels like that kind of art that's it's very human yeah um, yeah you know. and it and is I, interesting the transformation everything's it, you're watching from the beginning of this book to the ending it's a morphing that's happening you know it's very fluid and everything it's uh yeah, yeah it's yeah. um it's and, and the, the way I work with text is I'll write 30, 40, 50 pages of text. Mm-hmm. And then 
I will eviscerate the text mm -hmm. until I have like a couple of pages, five, 10 pages at, at most. And then I will go to the essential, the absolute essential of the text. And that's, that's the text that's in the book. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there, I, I think there, there, there are things that you don't, doesn't need to be, to be said, mm -hmm. you know, the visual medium, um, there are things that you can show, I think, you know, in a much more powerful way than just having somebody say something that's, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, I struggle with that too, where I go, I, I overwrite sometimes because I, I find that I'm not trusting the audience to really understand what I'm putting, like, I, I need to like be direct with them. And mm -hmm. that was my problem. I wanted to be um, a, a painter before I became a cartoonist. And my problem was that I was always imposing narrative on my paintings, uh, yeah. even putting words in them and stuff like that. And yeah. I couldn't, it's like, I couldn't, I needed to be really direct about what I wanted to say. And I still struggle with that. And then when I'm going back over something I've done, I go, oh, I can erase all of that. I don't need to, like, visually, you can pick up. You, I mean, you know, because you read comics, like, in the 70s and 80s, it's like, they're so overwritten where the caption is telling you everything that you're about to look at. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, you can just erase all of Stan Lee's narration and just read yeah. those comics, and they read a lot better than if you read exactly. what you to say exactly. about it. You know? So you know, Exactly. Like, it's, I think at some level, you have to you know, now <laughs> it's a difficult thing to say, but at, at some level you have to trust that your reader, your readership is intelligent. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a certain, there's a certain intellect um, that you're addressing. Um, you know, it's one of my problems with comics today is that, you know, it's, it's too much in the pathos, hmm. right? And not enough in the ethos. So I think when you address people at a certain level, it stays and you are you're you can have a much deeper, you know, conversation. And that's what I'm interested in. Because I mean, it's, it's con the comic book is an interface, right? Mm -hmm. It's an interface between two individuals having a conversation. And so, we can either talk about the, the latest Hollywood movie and whatever and how the weather outside, or we can like have a conversation about, you mm -hmm. know, deeper, deeper, you know, subjects. And I do prefer, prefer, you know, the, those deeper conversations. How do you, like, when you're doing this, like, for example, in Helm, the, is the, uh, you have like a four panel grid drawn out and then you just are, and then you're just creating art on paper and plugging them into where you think they should go on the, in the grid. You're not drawing on, I mean, this is not like four drawings on a, on a page, for example, this is four separate drawings that are then. Exactly. Um, so, so I usually draw on 14 by 17 and I usually uh, have uh, 16 panels on there. Mm -hmm. 12 to 16 panels on there. And some of them will be linear, like that whole conversation piece. Mm -hmm. uh, although um, I need it to be linear, but I didn't draw it in a linear fashion. So, because some of those responses and some of those gazes, you know, if, if you look at it, they're kind of in a weird place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of move them around a bit. You know, okay. it wasn't strictly linear. linear. Um, but then I like to play with that. Is that for like pacing purposes? Or? For, like the, the, the four, the four panel is for pacing. Okay. You know, I, I'm marking time. And sometimes the, f the four panels would, will be like just one panel. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's me, um, you know, fragmenting time, you know, telling you what's happening when it's happening and how you need to read, mm -hmm. you know, the pace you need to go to read these panels. Do you work in color ever? Yes. When I, when I do work in color, 
it's like you're having like a psychedelic trip. Oh, <laughs> I, really? like, yeah, yeah. I, I, when I do color, I do color. <laughs> it's yeah. like crazy colors, yeah. Yeah, I just wondered about that. I'd like to see how you would color a book like this, you know, like what it would yeah. look like. But I mean, the, the, to me, the black and white, um, you know, Gustave Doré, right? Who? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So early on in my childhood, he was like one of my, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But the black and white mostly comes from Kurosawa movies. Oh, yeah. You know, um, there's this interview with Kurosawa where he says like, um, the, the amount of tones of gray that exist is like twice the amount of color that exists. Mm -hmm. And so there's a depth to the image, you know, when you use gray and that always stayed with me. And it's something that, that I play with a lot, you know, mm -hmm. getting depth, you know, through the, you know, the gray. Are you in Quebec? Yes, Montreal, Quebec. So do you yeah. ever go to that like drawn and quarterly bookstore? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I do. Although I, I, I have to admit that I'm less into, not that I'm less into comics. Like I, I still, I still, you know, um, I still keep in touch of what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm less into comics. Well, you know, because of the masters, I have to read a lot. And yeah. So I have less time to, you know, to dabble into comics. What, what so, about when you were growing up, though? Were you like, is it, I think Quebec has a lot of like uh, imports from, from Europe, isn't it? Like a band as Yeah. But I mean, the unique situation in Quebec is that we're, we're kind of, you know, hatched between two cultures, mm -hmm. you know, between the American culture and the European culture. And so growing up, um, I started with uh, the French, the Franco-Belge bande dessinée, which I quickly abandoned. Oh, really? You know, oh, yeah. Yes. You know, that's, to me, that stuff, it became rather obvious to me that, you know, um, for me as a Black kid, it mm -hmm. wasn't, <laughs> you know, it wasn't the best way to relate to, you know, to, uh, to the world. Yeah. Uh, and then I found American comics, which were a bit closer mm -hmm. to where I want to be. I wanted to be as a person, you know, as a black kid, um, especially Jim Sterling yeah. or, or, you know, um, there was a complexity to his stories that I just mm -hmm. found, you know, you, you never knew if the hero was really a hero, you know, he always, you know, I, I just love that. Did you read Warlock? Warlock, uh, yeah. Shang-Chi. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, even, even like Thanos in the beginning, you, like, you uh -huh. never knew if he was like, you know, a bad guy or a good guy. I, I love that about, yeah. about, yeah, about Jim Starling. And also like the, the DC comics from the, from the seventies, you know, um, Batmans and Green Arrows and Green Lanterns, you know, they, they, they dealt with subjects that I thought were just so amazing that I, you know, being this black kid, upper class, living in Canada, there's stuff that you're not exposed to. Hmm. And then on TV, you're watching this stuff that, oh, you're, so be, you're supposed to be this drug addict kid that's in a gang and that's going to murder everybody. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know that, that world. And so to me, um, comics was a way to relate to the world and, and it was a way to relate to the world in a manner that, um, that made sense to me, mm -hmm. you know, because it like that Americanized world wasn't my world and I needed to understand why people projected that onto me. Mm -hmm. And I thought these comics gave me like, you know, a way to to jump, you know, into, um, into that narrative, mm. you know, to see where I fit, to see what's going on. And that's why these comics always made more sense to me, mm -hmm. you know, 
other side to like the, the whole superhero blonde blonde hair blue eyes superhero that saves the day i was like okay yeah you like the weirdo stuff uh, that they were doing I like the, yeah i like the weirdo stuff i like the complex stuff i like you know the the good guy or the bad guy that you don't know if he's a good guy or a bad mm -hmm. guy like i really i really liked it because that's that's what society you know kind of imposed on me you know yeah you're a black kid you're you know there, 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 there's a certain imposition on you. Um, even though it's not real, it's still there. Mm. And so that's why I was quickly attracted to those. And do you think that reading those comics, um, you were sort of becoming a, a, a comic artist yourself, but like even before you were one, like before you like officially got into comics, like you were like a, what's the word like in uh taking in this like structure of how to tell a story and how art should exactly, look. exactly. That happens, because, right? uh, because it's it's making choices right <clears throat> what appeals to you is what you project onto mm -hmm. the world and these things i mean you know i was like eight or ten and i was watching jorodowski movies and <laughs> movies. so to me you know this level of storytelling was early on, you know, kind of stamped onto me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would say that like you're a cartoonist before you even know it. I mean, it's, you know, the stuff that you uh, take in as a kid and everything, it really does. Yeah, I, I remember one of my aunts <clears throat> who used to know me when I was a when I was a baby. She was like, oh my God, it's Stanley. Do you still draw? I was like, yeah. And she was telling me how when I was a baby, you would like give me a, a pen and paper and you could leave me there all day. I would just draw. So, you know, I was one of those people who always drew before before I walked. Mm -hmm. So there was, you know, there was always this need for me to like, you know, interact with the world through, you know, drawing, through art and through illustration. But did the fine arts influence your drawing style? That when you went, came back to comics, like you, you had that influence? It did. Um, Gustav Klimt a lot. Mm -hmm. um, again, Jarodowski, like you know, creating the, the, the way he, the way he paces his uh -huh. movies. You know, <clears throat> uh, of course, Kurosawa a lot. Um, yeah. Do you like uh, Jodorowsky's comics? Like. Um... With Mobius? Strangely, <clears throat> I think his movies are way better than his comics. Yeah. Um, I think, I, I don't know why there's something, of course, I, I mean, you know, his comics are, but to me, his movies are way better. There's something that he loses in the mm -hmm. comics. You know, there's there's a immediacy in the movies. There's, there's like a, a reality in those movies that I mm -hmm. just don't find in the comics. I always love in the Holy Mountain when he says, "You are shit, but you can turn <laughs> yourself into gold." I think the, the the comics medium is has a certain um, history and feel to it, and sometimes people go into it wanting to, you know, fit in in that tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to me, it's not necessarily a good thing. Hmm. You know. <clears throat> You're, so you're not involved in like the comics community in Quebec, like you don't. Uh... I was, <clears throat> like for the longest time I was, mm -hmm. uh, but now I, you know, I'd hate to say I grew out of it because I, I haven't. But I've always had this idea <clears throat> that you know when people say comics is the ninth art, mm -hmm. that they should take that seriously, <clears throat> because I did. You know, the way. I make my comics is almost like painting, you know, a work. Mm. Right? Um, the same structure that you would find on a piece of work, whether it's a painting, an installation, whatever. I try to put that in in the comics. You know, the the, the visual art is a language. Comics is a language. I'm always interested in the intersectionality of the two. Mm -hmm. You know, how 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 
how do they communicate? Because you know they 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 are related, right? Yeah. There there's definitely a definite relationship. And so I'm really interested in how the two communicate. Uh, was that your uh, your choice to? Did you approach Conundrum and and say I want to collect these two books that I'd published, or why didn't you publish that collection yourself? Uh, well. You know, I I um, I kind of stopped public publishing um, a while ago, and I I wanted to be an official book. I wanted it to be an, an official book because in Canada, if you self publish, you know it's not it's not considered an official book. And mm -hmm. Andy approached me um, to put these two books together, and I was like, yeah, sure. Um, but then what I did is there is some stuff from the two previous books that I took out hmm. and there's some stuff in Helm that I added. So basically Helm is like a seven year, seven year project, hmm. you know, that like ran to its conclusion in, in, in Helm, which is fine because it's during when I ended Helm that I finally understood what, <laughs> what that book was all about. Right. <clears throat> so that was, you know, that was a good, that was a good um, way for me to like end that chapter. So Helm was uh, sort of a therapeutic uh, process to work on, or uh, was it exercising something for you? Um, therapeutic, I, I don't know, but to me it was like, um, a building block, you know, mm -hmm. when you're building something and at the end you finished and then you, you have the, this, <clears throat> sorry, you have this mastery of that thing that you built. Yeah. So to me, Helm was like a way for me to tell stories or to make comics in this, in this way that I didn't think existed. You know, sometimes you 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 make the book that you want to read. Yeah. So to me, Helen was that. And you were just going forward. It sounds like without really realizing what it was that that you were making, and then <coughs> finished. You were like, "Oh, that's what this all means." Like you, you exactly, know. exactly. Yeah. And then once Helen was done, it allowed me to jump um, to visual arts. Mm -hmm a lot quicker. And to me, Helm was like this building block to my art practice, you know? Yeah. And I've looked up that, you know, that this exhibit that you did that like for those who chose the sea. Yeah. That looks amazing, man. Is that traveling or anything? I mean, what, what's going on with that? It, 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 it did travel within Canada. The process to that work is the same process that I use for Helm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a project that I realized through several, several years of research. And then again, at the end, I completely gutted, you know, the project to get at the basics of what mm -hmm. I wanted to say. And it, um, you know, it, it was a powerful work. Uh, I mean, people who experience that work, it, it's a powerful work. I would like it if you had some kind of a book or something that had the drawings that you did for that, you know, the if you had some kind of book that just broke them down so I could see them. Yeah. I was yeah, trying to I look know. at them on the computer screen. I'm like, I can't get like a good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, yeah. It, it's something that we, we have some pictures, but they're not complete pictures. It's, you know, um, it's something that I, I still, I think need to work on. Mm-hmm. But I do, I do have another, another work, another book after Helm oh. that came after Helm that I wanted to publish exactly that way. Yeah. But it's like, you know, up here, the paper cost and the printing cost was like so, so bad that I just couldn't do it. But there is another, there is another book after Helm. Uh, is it, it's a comic book or is it uh It's, it's a comic book. Yeah. Well, wow. it's. It is. It's a comic book, um, comic book, art book. 
but I mean, you know, you, 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 you'll recognize, because you, you know, what I do is, um, instead of having the traditional panel, mm -hmm. my panels, the divide are basically, um, these big characters that you see yeah. uh, that divide the storytelling and that paces the storytelling. And so although you have a continuous drawing, you still have that notion of the panel. Yeah. It's just the divide, you know, mm -hmm. is drawn differently. Besides that, are you working on like another book? No, not right now. Like right now I'm working, I'm finishing my master's. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in a couple of galleries up in mm -hmm. Canada. Uh, you know, I do have a, like an art career going, but I mean, you know, comics is where it started. So yeah, I, I will definitely, you know, make more books.